Welcome back to episode 11 of Ambition Strikes. In this episode, we install a lift kit on the truck, Riley lights the camper on fire, and we shed some weight before hitting the road again. I'm Courtney, and that's my husband, Riley. Driven by a desire to learn new skills and challenge ourselves, we spent three months building our version of the Ultimate Expedition Vehicle. With the build coming to an end, it's time to hit the road and spend every second we can skiing, mountain biking, and sharing our passion for building things. So buckle up and follow along, because this is Ambition Strikes. I was excited about these. Wait, come here. All right, so now it's time to move on to installing our leveling kit in the front. So I'm gonna take a measurement right now of where we are stock 41 and a quarter in the front 39 and three quarters in the rear we have an adjustable lift block kit for the rear so we'll we'll level the truck once we have a better idea of how it sits when the front kit's installed did you already forget those measurements because i did that's why you got right stuff down this kit comes with two new front springs to raise the front two inches and four shocks for all four corners so here we go The butt crack made an appearance. <gasps> it says to hand tighten the lock nut. I definitely don't have the finger strength to hand tighten a lock nut. I think maybe we wrench tighten. So close, but we gotta go up more. Send it down. So we needed to install a small lift on the truck to make room for the 37 inch tires. And the shocks that we wanted to go with are back ordered for a while. So we got these Bilstein 5100s that are a little longer in length to uh, get us by in the meantime. But I think it's gonna be a big upgrade over our tired uh, stock shocks. It's important whenever you're working on suspension with bushings like this track bar right here, you need to tighten the bolts when the truck is at ride height so that that bushing is tightened in a neutral position. So you need to do all that stuff when the, when, once the weight is back down on the vehicle. When you lift a car with a track bar like this, very rarely afterwards does the bolt line up right here. And you can try to use a screwdriver or a punch or something to line it up, but I like to just stick a ratchet strap between the chassis and the axle. You can slowly work it until that hole is lined up and it's just super easy. Big ol' heavy box of trash. So the leveling kit that we installed on this truck was really designed to level a truck that's driving around empty. Our truck was actually sitting level before we leveled it. So now it's sitting high in the front. So we're gonna add two inch lift blocks to the rear to bring the rear up a bit. All right, time to pick it up more and get the lift blocks in. We are not a how-to channel. Don't do it how we do it. You're making your wife nervous. I wish our other floor jack wasn't broken and I could use it to pick up on the spring a little bit. Bottle jack? We do have a bottle jack. So I'm gonna try to use the bottle jack to compress this spring a little bit to make enough room to slide the lift block in. I love it when the boxes are empty. Main project for today is to get some work done around the house. And uh, so we're gonna go check in on Courtney. Just crossing some stuff off the list, little maintenance things on the camper that have been a lot easier to do at home versus on the road.
We brought too much stuff with us on this trip. And uh, so I'm gonna go through and kind of figure out what we need and what we don't need and weigh it all and figure out just how much weight we can save by just leaving some stuff behind that we don't need. You know, I think the reality is that the tools that we carry are for uh, working on stuff in an emergency where something's broken or doing minor repairs in the camper. If we are doing anything major, I'm gonna be heading into, uh, into a town where I can get tools and have access to stuff. So I can't really think of a situation where I would actually need this circular saw and I couldn't just use the reciprocating saw, so that's gonna go. While I love to have an impact gun like this, um, I can probably get away with just using the, the drill driver, so I don't need to carry this with us. I have other flashlights, so I don't need this flashlight. I certainly don't need five batteries, so I'm just gonna keep the two big ones and leave the rest of these behind. Why the heck did I even bring a masonry blade? We're not doing a tile work. So that brings us down to just the, the drill, the reciprocating saw and the grinder. I think those are three tools that I'd like to have with us on the road. So now let's see how much weight we saved. There we go, we dropped another 16 pounds by leaving those tools behind. So when we hit the road, the rig was very untested and I brought all kinds of spare parts and latches and screws and stuff. And um, over time, we kind of sorted a couple little issues out and I decided I really don't need to carry this giant box of stuff with me anymore. So let's see how much weight we're gonna save with this. 12 more pounds we're leaving behind. Courtney's dad bought her this socket set uh, back in college and we've carried it with us almost everywhere we've gone since then. And it's great, you know, it has almost everything you need and it's, it's pretty compact, but it's also pretty heavy. The reality is we don't need two 13 millimeter sockets. Oh wait, three, no wait, four 13 millimeter sockets. Uh, same thing, you know, there's a ton of redundancy in this kit. Uh, so I think that I'm actually gonna put it together a new kit and leave this guy behind. So this weighs 21 pounds. 21 pounds and I bet we can get it down to less than 10. So I also think one of the big disadvantages of bringing too much stuff is it's really hard to remember what you have and it's also really hard to find it when you are looking for something specific. It's, I think it's a lot better to carry a few essentials that you know you need to, to get yourself out of a pinch. And uh, if you're not in a pinch, then you can probably go to the store and grab whatever you need. You know, I actually think I did pretty well when packing this one. I don't have a lot of redundancy like I was expecting to find in here. We've got some more common size sockets, my big breaker bar, a couple extensions, oil filter wrench, sets of pliers, uh, scissors, wire cutters, wire crimpers, screwdrivers, hammer, adjustable wrenches, a three quarter wrench because there's lots of stuff that's three quarter. Um, I like to carry a couple pairs of vice grips. These can be great if you pinch a brake line. Allen wrenches, multimeter, and uh, power probe, and then um, like miscellaneous electrical connectors and screws. So this is gonna be really tough to thin this down much, but uh, I'm gonna try. We've got probably more pliers than we need. We've got an extra screwdriver. So right there is 75 pounds worth of stuff that I just know right off the bat we don't need. There's more still to go, but this is a pretty good start. And 75 pounds is significant. Courtney just told me, all right, I'm done. She's been mowing all day. And then I hear this other engine start up. Let's go find Courtney. She tends to overdo it sometimes. And here she is with the weed whacker. What are you doing? Work it! <laughs> oh my gosh, she's crazy. My goats like to play dead, which gives me a little heart attack every morning. So let me see if I can sneak up on turkey and you guys can see. Road salt is hard on things, so I'm just touching up the paint in the wheel wells. Never a dull moment around here. I thought I smelled something burning. <laughs> So I'm making some repairs to the step. We had some cracks starting to form right here on the ends. I had the, the welder ground hooked up right here. And instead of it jumping right down in here into the part, we ground it up through the cable back and around and down and lit the, the nylon sheath around the cable on fire. It's supposed to look like that. Instead it looks like that. You need to be really careful about where I hook the welder ground up so I don't light the truck on fire. 
Lesson learned. And I should probably say something sooner when I smell something on fire. We've really been enjoying the California warmth and sun before we go back to the snow. So we just installed a Bilstein two inch leveling kit with their 5100 series shocks, as well as a two inch lift block in the rear. The leveling kits are designed to level an empty truck, but our truck's loaded down. So we also needed to put a two inch lift block in the rear to bring the, the rear up to match the front. Even though these are just kind of our placeholder shocks until the real shocks are ready, we are super impressed with the improvement in ride quality. We ended up on a few dirt roads yesterday that we weren't planning to take and we immediately noticed a difference on the washboard and the big potholes. Just more comfortable, less jarring, and so we are super stoked with that. We are actually back on the road for leg two of our trip and we are headed to... Bend, Oregon to go do some skiing at Mount Bachelor and I just heard there's even another surprise for you guys. Stay tuned. Cradle like a baby. He won't hold real babies, but he'll tell you how to hold your coil springs. You gotta support it by the neck. 